Welcome to another episode of Crazy About Fly Fishing. Today we're going to be talking about the gear that I use on the river. Everything from rods to what I keep in my fly vest. So let's talk about rods. My favorite rod to use for trout in New Zealand is a 9 foot 5 weight. Currently I'm using the 5 weight camo rod from Isla Fly Fishing. Lovely rod. I like the 5 weight. It's just perfect for delivering dry flies delicately and uh, also small numps. It works great in anything from smallish streams to medium sized rivers. In fact, I've even used it on the Tongariro quite successfully. It's in summer, especially the first rod I go to. My second choice rod is a nine foot six weight, also a floating line. And I use that when I need to go a little bit heavier on, on slightly bigger rivers. I'll often use it on the Tongariro and when I'm throwing a bit heavier nymphs uh, in deeper water. It just handles the heavier nymphs better and easier to, easier to get that out there. Then when it comes to real heavy stuff in the winter, I used to go to a eight weight rod, on the, especially on the Tongariro, and you know, to get the real heavy bombs out there and you know, real, get real deep in the, in the fast water. But these days, I don't. I still stick with the six weight most of the time and I find that works for me. Uh, you know, I, I'd rather go a little bit longer leader and slightly lighter flies and just fish a little bit more easily with a six weight. Um, the eight weight can get a bit heavy after a, a whole day swinging, slinging that around. Another thing that I've been dabbling in recently and having a lot of fun with is swinging flies. I have a 11 foot 5 weight switch rod and on that I've got one of these integrated OPST uh, Skagit lines with a, with a tip. Brilliant, it's a fantastic little setup. Uh, very easy to cast, you can just get right across the river with so little effort and just swing those flies down to the fish. Just like that, right across the river. And just take a few steps down, and such a relaxing way to fish. Uh, I'm still getting the hang of it. I haven't caught a lot of fish with it yet, um, mainly because you know, with everything techniques matter, technique matters a lot. So that's something I'm going to be doing a lot more this winter and really getting the hang of it. Uh, it's a very pleasant way of fishing on big rivers like the Tongariro, especially. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about fly lines. As you've just heard from the rod setups, it's all pretty much floating lines. I don't use it much else. Uh, generally just tend to use floating lines on my rods and I either nymph or I dry nymph or just dry. So that's the majority of what I do, except obviously for the integrated Skagit line when I'm swinging flies, that's a different setup, but the Skagit head's still floating and then the uh, tip is a sink tip to help you get the flies down. So that's pretty much the line of fly lines that I use. And on my reels, I've just got a hundred yards of backing behind the fly line and that's about it. Now something else I really recommend on the river that I've been using lately is a wading staff. Uh, the one that I got off while I love fly fishing, it didn't cost very much, 30 or 40 bucks I think, but it folds up perfectly and it's just so much better wading with a third leg and having extra stability, especially on the big rivers like the Tongariro where you, you, know, you fall over, it's, it's not very pleasant at all and can be quite dangerous. That, gives you just extra stability, highly recommend it. The next thing you need is a landing net. I mean, there's many varieties of landing nets from way nets and this kind of net and that kind of net. You just want a net that is going to be good for the trout and, you know, easy to handle. Uh, make sure that you've got a, a nice mesh or a hard rough one or a, even a rubberized net is a great idea as well. And uh, I attach my net with a magnetic clip. It just makes it a little bit easier to get the net off from the back and get it ready to uh, to get those fish. The problem with the magnetic clips is that if you're walking around, every time the net catches a blackberry, it unclips. <laughs> so that can be a bit painful. So sometimes I wish I didn't have that. Another option is a stretchy cord with a carabiner. You can just clip that up and then unclip it and you can't lose your net because you've got the carabiner. The problem with the carabiner setup is that often you're fighting to get the thing loose. You just can't get it. It just won't unhook when you've got a fish and I've lost fish because of that because I couldn't get my net off. I was fiddling with the net and not paying attention to what the, uh, what the trout was doing and it was swimming under a bank or something like that. So that is something I don't recommend. I have really enjoyed the magnetic clips. So that's something you could, you could definitely try out. I think there's some versions of that available for my love fly fishing and I think that's where I got mine. A cap, love my cap and some uh, polarized sunglasses. For wading in the summertime, I just 
weighed with quick dry pants, anything like the Columbia quick dry pants or any set of quick dry pants is good. And I tend to wear long sleeved thin shirts that I just buy from a warehouse or dedicated fishing shirts as well is good. And that just keeps the sun off you, which is quite nasty in New Zealand. So the other thing that's really important for wading is obviously good boots and making sure that you have good tread on it. And you can even use something like rocket treads to add grip as well. I'm probably going to do that to an old pair of boots of mine uh, that I still use quite a bit, but I, will, I just want a bit of extra grip on them. Because we don't use felt any longer in New Zealand. Uh, we only allow rubber, rubber sold uh, boots because of the risk of transferring didymo. So when I'm fishing in the colder months, or when it gets a little bit colder, I fish in breathable waders. I add all sorts of varieties uh, and all sorts of versions, generally the cheaper ones. As long as you get a good pair of boot-footed waders, they last. At the, currently, I'm wearing a pair of Aquas waders, which is a real upgrade for me. I've worn over worn such nice waders. Uh, I've got them from I Love Fly Fishing, fantastic uh, front zip waders, good quality and really comfortable fit. I've only worn them about few to four times, so I can't you know, comment too much on them. But so far they've been great and really a, a, a nice way to compare to what I've been wearing before. The alternative to expensive breathable waders, if you're just going to be fishing in the winter in the Taupo and Rotorua regions, uh, a lot of people just wear neoprene waders. Uh, they're a little bit better priced and they are very durable and last a long time. Uh, but in the warmer parts where it's sort of in between cold and hot, uh, they get really uncomfortable. They're not good for backcountry going very far. You know, it's nice for like going on the Tongariro, putting them on, going on the Tongariro, fishing for the day. Not nice to go and walk in the backcountry with seven neoprene, neoprene waders. Definitely not recommend that. So yeah, that's another option. And they often include the, the boots or you can get uh, ones with neoprene socks as well. So you can wear your normal wading boots with those as well. An essential piece of kit for wading is a good wading belt, making sure that you keep that belt on tight so that if you fall over, the whole thing doesn't fill up like a parachute with full of water. And that just makes life very difficult when you fall in the water. So the wading belt prevents the bottom from filling up completely if you fall in the water. So it's just a bit of a safety thing, so make sure you wear a good wading belt. So other things that I carry in my uh, fly vest that I haven't mentioned in other videos is things like a forceps and nippers to just cut your line and to obviously remove hooks from the fish. My forceps actually include uh, cutting parts, so it, I actually use that instead of nippers. We're quite handy just having one thing for both purposes. So one other thing that you can carry is things to add weight to your flies to get them down deeper. Now one option is uh, lead shot, which you clip onto your line. Lead in the water, not a, such a great idea. These days I've moved to tungsten putty. Uh, quite an interesting thing, I am guess I'll get used to that, but that's, uh, that's an alternative to split shot. Uh, and you just add that to your, to your line as well. So that's something worth trying as well. So in the summer I generally carry a waterproof waste pack and that just keeps my fly boxes and all my forceps and stuff in there because I want to keep it to the minimum. The reason being I uh, already have so much filming gear to carry. I carry my GoPro harness and then on the back I have to carry a waterproof backpack to keep my main camera and things in as well. So you know that gets a lot of gear so I just keep the flows fly box and stuff in the minimum and the waist base back, super easy. So in the winter I don't want to add a jacket and all these extra things on top of my waist pack and just make it, so I'll just pull myself down and make it difficult. So what I've got now is a wonderful wading jacket from uh, Aquas, it's available from I Love Fly Fishing. It's already got pockets for your fly boxes, it's got uh, places to clip on zingers and things so you can actually carry everything you need in your wading jacket. So just that. Underneath that I have then my harness with my GoPro sticking out. Very simple setup and quite nice. Uh, don't have to wear, carry the waist pack then. No, no need for that so I can just stick my uh, backpack on the back with my camera in it and my net hanging off that. In fact the waist, the waiting jacket has a clip on place so I can attach the, uh, the magnetic clip for the net as well. So fantastic setup, love that. So that sums up the gear that I use. If you want to see what flies and rigs and knots I use, please click the link coming up above. That will take you to that video. And if you want to see more of these kinds of videos, 
please subscribe to this channel. I produce content every week, normally one fishing video and one fly tying video. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.